We are rolling. Ben, welcome back. Thank you. We're back. We're back. Three by three, but today is funny because we actually have four questions. For real? Your eyes twitching right now. Is it? Yeah. I don't feel that. This one. Like the eyelid or uh, the eye? Well, the eye, uh, not the lid, the no, eye the, bottom. The eye bottom. It's, it's still a lid. The back. It's just the uh, lid doesn't mean, oh, I guess lid. Usually. No, it's this part. I don't feel it. It's twitching. You'll see it. We'll run it back on the episode. You'll be able to see it. Zoom in on it. It's going to distract people. Yeah, the, 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 I know you only see three questions here, but it's actually a work related question. And it's from a guy named Stan. Stan asks, my boss, Ken, brushes his teeth in a way that I don't agree with. <laughs> oh, my. He goes, God. Ken goes paste wet, and I'm a wet paste wet. How do I come into work and take him seriously when he can't even brush his teeth correctly? Oh, so this is a, this is a conversation. <laughs> this is from Great Question Stan. Yeah, great Question Stan. This is a question that we debated in the office for a very long time is what is your toothpaste. tooth brushing, toothpaste uh, uh, application procedure. Pre- procedure. Yeah. Process. So there's really three options here. There's right. only one correct option. But one, option one is completely dry. Just paste. Just paste. Paste in. Go in. That's option psychopath two material. Is pi- that, yeah, no. Yes. That's part of our going, hiring process. If you're going paste dry, that's no. Then there's option two is paste, paste and then you wet. And then pa- option three is... Wet paste wet. <laughs> wet paste wet. We were mostly... We were mostly the last. No one was paste. They would no. have been immediately terminated on the spot if they were just paste. Most people are either paste wet or wet paste wet. Obviously, wet paste wet's the correct way, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was paste wet. You're a paste wet guy. But I, I've converted. I used to be wet paste wet. I didn't talk about that before. You didn't? I used to be. Whoa. You, I, I, it totally I, changed my perspective. I, you know I figured out? <clears throat> what? You're just wasting time. <laughs> it's getting wet. Oh, yeah. With the, you're wasting time with the original wet? Yes. Mm, maybe. But we were talking about it in terms of washing your car. You're not just... But you're not washing your car. Well, I like to think of things that, like dishes or car. You don't just throw soap on a yeah, dry Yeah, you're washing your teeth. You're not washing your, 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 your... So let me say this. You're not washing your toothbrush. You're washing your teeth. You don't want the toothpaste to sink down deep into it. You're creating more... Uh, seepage? Seepage. Sounds gross. That is a gross word. How has no one ever used that word? It's like <laughs> seepage. Like they talk about like gross moist words. is gross. Yeah, moist seepage. Seepage oh, is worse. That's way worse. It just doesn't come up as much yes. in conversation. Oh, but I, <laughs> but yeah. Next time I'm going to the car wash, we're we're not gonna dry. We're not gonna wet the car first. We're just going soap and then again get it. The, it's an analogy that doesn't compute. I'm gonna stand by it. Welcome to three by three. That it's four by three today. That one, where we speak nonsense for about two to three minutes, and then we answer three of your questions on how to become a more physically capable and mentally formidable athlete. We have three more questions. The first one was the hardest one. It wasn't really a question. It was just a conversation. This one, question one, fun one. Imagine CrossFit were in the Olympics. What would you do to distinguish it there from the CrossFit Games, if anything at all? For example, weight classes, fewer tests, teams only, etc. Okay, I... <clears throat> we've had this conversation in different forms on different platforms um, before. And I've always kind of been like, eh, it doesn't really belong. I'm changing my tune. Just like you did with your toothpaste. Yeah, exactly. Right. I'm not, <laughs> so I'm, a, I, I actually, um, there was this really cool, I think it was Spike Jones um, documentary. On, no, no. Spike, Spike Jones. Jones is a person. Yes. Wow. On the beastie boys. Oh, and they're up on stage um, basically two of them, the third one had died talking about their careers and talking about the way it all happened. And one of the things that they, this is such a digression, such a tangent, but one of the, um, one of them, I think it was Mike D, um, Ad Rock, I can't remember which one at one point was like, you know, I've changed my, my, my thoughts on this. And someone goes, isn't that being a hypocrite? And he goes, actually, I think it's just the opposite. If we're not changing our viewpoints on certain things, then we're just kind of like being bullheaded and stubborn and we want to learn and grow. We have more data points. We have a, so he's like, I've completely changed my perspective on the way I think of, I can't remember what the specific was. So maybe the story doesn't land as hard, but the idea was you, everyone should feel free to change their tune, change their approach because we should, we should be mm-hmm. constantly capturing. More. So that gets back to this. I used to think that CrossFit would not make, it's not 
compelling to um, this conversation of like, should it be in the Olympics? If so, what form should it take? Was not a very compelling conversation because mm-hmm. it's about the games, it's about the unknown, the unknowable. I, with having, I think I have a good format. Ooh, that would actually be really cool. Okay, go for it. Your eyes. We'll talk about it right after these messages. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so here's how it goes. So how do we make it different? How do we make it compelling? <clears throat> It's um, a little bit, it's, it's going to be a team format. This is not individuals. Mm-hmm. It's not, but it's um, what country, like it does like the United States um, hockey team, right? Mm-hmm. The Miracle on Ice and stuff like that. The USA basketball and all those. And there's a men division and a women division. And it's three athletes on a team, kind of like the way Wadapalooza does it. I yep. think it's really compelling. That's, yeah. They've kind of proven that's a really cool model. Mm-hmm. So three guys go. We can talk about what the qualification process and all that stuff. But essentially, when you're there, there will be 10 tests. There will be – and there has to be some sort of level of standardization. But it can't be totally standardized because otherwise you're now doing like a decathlon. Yeah. And it's no longer – um. You know, decathlon, but we'd have... It's just very noble, yeah. So, 10 tests. Five of those tests would be known and the same every single year. So, you have um, world records, Mm -hmm. which would be so Mm -hmm. cool. But the five other ones would change year after year. And the way you do this is there would be one... There would be two tests in the zero to one minute time domain. One of those would be consistent and the other one would be every year, four years changes mm-hmm. and the host venue gets to do it. And that makes sense as well because like even like ski racing, like it's a different hill, like there's different times. There's, yeah. It's not yeah. like everyone has to be the same every single time. It's not necessarily like it has to be a 400 meter like it is in track. There are certain races that are different, but this would kind of combine both of those things. Mm. So you have world records, but you also have this new thing. And the way I would do it is... um the five different time domains. So zero to one minute, a fixed and a flexible. And then another one in the three to five minute range, one fixed, one flexible, another in the 10 to 20 minute, I should say two more in the Mm -hmm. 10 to 20, fixed and flexible. And then another one, which would be in the one to three hours, one fixed and one flexible. Mm. So I would also... Have this be where you start both of that. This would make it really cool. Um, it's a five-day thing, and every day you have two tests. Mm-hmm. And on day one, it's both of the um, the short ones. Yeah. Now, this would be up for debate, but both the short ones. And the fifth day, it's both of the long ones. So you actually gain like potentially four to six hours in the last That's one. a big day. But then what would happen is the leaderboard would completely shift based off of like this huge thing, who's better at the short ones, who's better at the long mm-hmm. ones. But you could imagine this thing, like imagine imagine the um, the fixed one for the really short one was something like uh, a relay race of three thrusters at 205 for guys into a 200 meter run tag. The next guy does three thrusters at 205, 200 meter run tag, like That'd be super cool. Yeah. And then another one for the um, three to five minute one would be something like 2159 of synchro bar muscle ups, um, uh, synchro overhead squats, and a calorie row, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. super cool. The next one would be like in that 10 to 20 minute time domain, might be something like three rounds for time of uh, 30 worm thrusters, uh, 30 burpees. That's showing up at the games. That's yep. been one of the games mm-hmm. workouts. And then in the 30 to 40 minute one, you have Team Murph with synchro movements in between, run together holding a rope. And the last one would be um, an Olympic distance triathlon. Mm. Like you have to stay together as a team. Like that would be, those are the fixed. And then you run through the same thing again, but now you have the flexibles. Yeah. It'd be cool, right? That'd be cool. Is there a lift in there? Uh, So like the flexible one, right? Could Could be be a one rep max snatch. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's totally cool. And you got to do like, the flexibles can kind of do their thing. Yeah. That's cool. But the three rep thruster essentially kind of becomes like a big, and maybe that should be at 225. We can talk Mm -hmm. about that, Mm -hmm. you know, but keep it We'll talk about it with the Olympic committee. Well, yeah, we'll figure it out and just let them know what we're doing. Our ball's in your court. Oh, you just threw it to them. I just threw it to them. Yeah. I'll start putting together my team. 
We should. I think it'd be really cool. Yeah? I think it'd be a really cool format. All right. We got four years. Five fixed, five flexible. Yeah. And maybe it's yeah, maybe the way you run through it is like, there's a short and the long together on day one. Mm-hmm. And then there's the short, next shortest, next longest. And the last day has the two really sweet spot ones. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. I would do it where the CrossFit teams just, they went and did 10 other random events and they didn't tell them what they were doing. They're like, hey, you're about to... You're about to go bobsledding. And they're like, oh, my oh God. God. <laughs> They actually. Like, you don't. You're, you're going to do, like, team figure. It's like uh, ice dancing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just bring. It's still team. Uh, new sport coming out. Break dancing is in really? the Olympics. Break wow. dancing is in the Olympics. Damn. Crazy. Is pickleball getting there, too? In Paris. Wow. I don't think pickleball. I don't know the answer to that. My, I feel my eye twitching on this side. That one's not What's twitching. What's going on? You didn't get enough sleep last night. No, I, oh, you're right. I didn't. All right, Olympics. We got two different options. Just do random stuff or do that one. That one's very exciting. All right, number two. I have decent metabolic conditioning but find myself lacking in the strength factor. I'm 29 years old, great age. As of this episode, I'm probably 30, though, when this is launched. Uh, 170. My deadlift is 330, back squat 245, snatch 155, and clean and jerk 200. Mm-hmm. My goal is to perform well in the 2024 CrossFit Open. Mm-hmm. Considering Ben says that strength takes a lot longer to train compared mm-hmm. to Metcon, should I still follow CompTrain completely or focus more on a weightlifting program and get back on CompTrain in January of 2024? Uh, this, is a gr- this is a great question. And in the early days of CrossFit, this is probably the question that I asked myself the most mm-hmm. because uh, kind of um, it's me. Right. And it's a lot of the people in our sport when they kind of get introduced is I can bring up my conditioning skills are kind of come along, but strength is taking a really, really long time. And it's not up to where my other things are. Should I hop off of a concurrent training program and do a more strength based and then come back to it? And my answer to that is different than it would have been if you had asked me this question 15 years ago, 15 years ago, it would have been what they're indicating spend the off because it takes a long time spend the off of season a lot of change in this. there we go so you change your mind on toothbrush this this <laughs> this is great 15 uh uh i would have gone like yes yeah, spend six to nine months getting mm-hmm. stronger and then come back to the conditioning thing that's not when you work on the conditioning thing your strength will also improve this is with the benefit of concurrent training that people don't recognize when they're first coming into this thing you can and will get stronger while your fitness is getting better. That sounds weird because exercise science says that's not possible. Exercise science is being rewritten. That's th- that's for real. Like people, yes, can have 600 pound back squats and run a mm-hmm. 525 mile. That can happen. Before it was like, there's fast twitch and there's slow twitch. There's type A and type two muscle fibers. There's type 2B, which can do this kind of wobbly thing. But to actually do this thing, you need to periodize your program and make sure you're doing this thing in this form or fashion so you peak on this day. That's not the case. If you want to deadlift 1,000 pounds, yep, I'm going to agree with you on that. If you want to be good at our sport, no, you can get to a 500 pound deadlift mm-hmm. and a sub 220 Fran and do 20 unbroken ring muscle ups, but you're not going to get there by trying to get those things individually and playing the seesaw game. The way to do it is all together now, all together, but we do want to get stronger. It takes a long time. How do we do that? Most of our users are, we have uh, you know, kind of a different options on how much you want to train mm-hmm. each day. Mm-hmm. Most of our people are training two hours a day. We have other options where you can train 30, 30 minutes, an hour, an hour, uh, two hours or three hours. Most of our users train two. So I'm going to assume this guy is doing two hours. Mm-hmm. Here would be my suggestion. Do the one hour track, but the lifting from the three hour track. Mm-hmm. So the lift, the weightlifting, uh, there's more weightlifting in the three hour track. Obviously, right? Yeah, you have an extra to, hour. To paint a picture on that, there's always two. There's two lifts, lifts. every single day in the three-hour yeah. track. Mm-hmm. Do those. Then take a, don't do the extra conditioning stuff that's also in the three-hour. Then just go back to the one-hour mm-hmm. one. So essentially, you're getting your two lifts that show up every single day, and you're getting your conditioning piece maybe every now and then a secondary little conditioning piece. Mm-hmm. But that's if you do the three-hour track 
lifting, you're going to get stronger. Mm-hmm. That's going to allow the whole, the, 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 the tide to lift all ships, not just one, not just waves, right? Mm-hmm. One's coming up and one's going down. Yeah. That's a, so the short answer is follow the three hour lifting, but then do a conditioning piece every single day. It's kind of what you're doing right now. It, it's exactly what yeah. I'm doing right now. Yeah. Because um, I've spent a, a long time, the last probably, uh, honestly, it's been like five years since I've lifted anything heavy. I just, I had, um, I had a back fusion in 2000 and I want to say 13, 14, something like, it's probably 2014. Mm -hmm. And I was, I I was, I did the smart thing. I want to be fit and healthy. So I didn't lift anything above a 135 barbell for five years, six years. Um, I'm excited to get stronger again. So this is literally exactly what I'm doing. I've, I've been doing it for a, a short period of time and I put, crazy amounts of strength um i'm very similar to where this guy is right now Mm -hmm. i started to kind of where this guy is 29 years old yeah (laughs) those strength numbers yeah oh yeah but i put on you know just in a month i put on um you know upwards of 40 pounds on my back squat in a month Mm -hmm. just by doing this dual program yeah hell yeah when i say dual dual lifting every day double lift yeah double lift and i cut out one of the conditioning pieces Rip this in half right now. Let's see if you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question three. What are the most important elements of a warm up routine before a training session to be completely physically prepared? Yeah. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot. Uh, but what are the most? Uh, I don't know how to answer. Like, what's the totality of the most important? What's the most important? You're physically and mentally ready to train. Mm-hmm. That's and what that looks like for different athletes is very, very different. If you're my ten year old son. What does that mean? It means you put on a pair of sneakers. Yeah. Right? If (laughs) if you're me, it means you're probably spending 45 to 50 minutes foam rolling, stretching, activating, doing a general and a specific warm up and all that. So let's just kind of piece through. If you're you in 29, it's probably somewhere in between, right? We were joking during the age group qualifiers that it's it's two minutes for every year you've been on the planet. I love that. So Bubba was here for, yeah. That's actually two hours. <laughs> that's probably not a bad <laughs> yeah. starting place, yeah. right? Um, yeah, I actually kind of like that. It, it might be like even a yeah, minute, a minute, a minute for every, well, you're for your saying, age. yeah, you're in your forties. You're like, I take 40 I'm 46 minutes. years old. I yeah. probably take 46 minutes. Yeah. Okay. So what are the components? The first component is I'm going to go through like in order, I'm not going to say in order of importance, but in order of sequence of events. The first thing we should be doing is working on um, tissue quality. And that's something like foam rolling. Mm-hmm. You can actually gain a lot of range of motion as well, which is the secondary thing that we want. You need to be able to, someone like me who wakes up really stiff and kind of, I need to, it takes me a while to work through below parallel. It takes me a little bit while to work on a good overhead position. So I gain, I gain those things by first foam rolling. You can get caught up in foam rolling. You only need to spend a minute on each body part, but it feels so good. We want to spend like four or five minutes. Except the quad. Move on after a minute. So just, and make sure you're getting the things. Mm-hmm. So a minute on body parts, anything that has uh, like literally physically pain to the touch, spend a little bit more time on that. Exception being the IT band. It's always going to, it's just the way it's set up on your leg. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna be like, oh, my IT band's gnarly. Well, it's always gonna be gnarly. Um, and how well, flat it is, you actually don't get that much benefit from foam rolling. Not saying don't do it, but don't be tricked into thinking you need to spend a half hour on it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, foam roll. The next one is range of motion. Range of motion can take a lot of different forms, static stretching, active stretching, dynamic stretching. The idea is be able to own the range of motions that you're going to be required you to do in the workout. So if you're going to go below parallel, spend whatever time you need to do to be able to go down that with really good movement mechanics. You're not working to get there. Mm -hmm. Okay. From there, Let's get, um, let's activate. Let's get the muscles to fire the way we want to. That'd be something like crossover symmetry, hip halo, whatever you want to do to get like the muscles kind of doing what they're supposed to be doing. The next would be a general warm up. General warm up usually involves all the major movement patterns, meaning that we're probably doing something to get generally warm. Like let's do 90 bike second or bike or row or run. 90 seconds is good enough. Then we're going to go through, um, 
a lower body push, a lower body pull, an upper body push, an upper body pull, maybe also something that engages through the midline a little extra as well. So what would that look like? Let's do some uh, air squats. Let's do some good mornings. Let's do some uh, pull-ups. Let's do some push-ups and maybe a couple of GHD sit-ups, something like that, mm-hmm. if we want to throw in. Mm-hmm. And we're probably to go through that two or three rounds. And that takes, if you spend a minute on each of those, five or so um, of those movements, you're looking at something around 10 minutes, you want to do three rounds, 10 to 15 minutes. Now we're generally warm. This will, it's not a workout. This will improve your performance. You'll have a nice light sweat. And then from there, we go into the specific warm up. Specific warm up is literally the movements you're going to be doing in the workout, just as much lighter loads and intensity. Mm -hmm. This is also a great place to add in technique work as well. So if we're going to be doing uh, a snatch as our first movement, not only are we going to b- slowly build up in weight, that's a warm up before we get to our, you know, whatever it is, three by three at 85%, we're going to build, that's a warm up. Mm-hmm. But we also might do some high hang snatches, some snatch balances, some pausing overhead squat holds, just kind of like drill in some movement patterns, um, some snatch pulls for technique, whatever it might mm-hmm. be. So yeah, just a, a recap there. It's kind of foam roll. And then it's range of motion, then it's activate, then it's general warm up, and then it's specific warm up. Got it. And then you're getting into it. it. Love it. And yeah, if you're 60 years old, that's, yeah. You got a minute. You got an hour. In class starts at five, you're in there at 3 a.m. and you're just getting ready. Yeah. Now, if you want, (laughs) now you can speed those things up, right? Yeah, for sure. You don't need to spend, but Mm -hmm. it's like, that's where this level of individuality comes in. Um, But it's kind of like a nice kind of macro starting place. Feeling primed. Prime. My eyes twitching now. It's just is it? It's feeling. It's it's contagious. It's contagious. Whatever yeah. we got. In here. Everyone, shut this off quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's watching. Their <laughs> eyes just start twitching. All right, three by three. Subscribe down here. Somewhere down here, there's a subscribe button. Uh, also, keep putting your questions in the comments. We'll answer them here. See you next time.